Everybody, welcome back to another Should Have Boosted episode 23. And with me are two fine gentlemen. First of all, my co host, Mark. How's it going? Going a little stir crazy at home, but not too bad, buddy. How about you? Well, I mean, you, again, you, you get out on the trains, you're, you're like living the wildlife, really, compared to us. Uh, choo choo, choo choo. <laughs> and also joining us is the famous Chris Dancox. Chris, how's it going? Uh, I'm doing all right. I'll echo the statements around uh, going a little stir crazy. I don't get out on trains or anything like that. So I'm uh, just staring out my window waiting for squirrels to come by. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, getting a little slow these days. <laughs> yeah. More importantly, how's your hair doing? Oh, it's doing good. You know, I actually had to go get a hat before this uh, podcast because otherwise I, I know I'd be like running my fingers through it because it's getting a little <laughs> bit long. Messing up the mic while I'm doing it. You gotta bring back the mullet. Yeah, pretty pretty quick. Do it. I actually had to get my wife to cut my hair the other day. It's uh, you know, the good news is it's long on top and short on the side. So she was razor and away at it. I was like, you know, as as long as you don't cut long hair, you're okay. Once you cut long hair, you've gone too far. Yeah, no kidding. Mine keeps threatening to cut mine. And I keep telling her, no, get away. Same thing over yeah, here. A lot of people shave the heads and they say that I'm going to be next. And you know, at, at this point, I might as well. It's getting so short anyway, but. Well, <laughs> short, bald, whatever. Yeah. It's all about the way that you think about it, right? It's just, it's, it's pre cutting itself. That's all. I mean, it's, yeah. I'm going to save on haircuts. Just think it positive. That's all. Yeah, exactly. So that's a great segue because what we're going to be talking about today is basically the the positivity or maybe negatively, I don't know, we'll have to see where this conversation goes, about where tabletop gaming has really played a role in our life. So, of course, everyone's kind of suffering in their basements right now, not being able to get out and game at the stores, or hopefully people aren't going out to go game at the stores. And along with that, I just thought it'd be great to pull on like someone like Chris, so, I mean, Man, I've been playing with him for a long time. I'm just going to see, like, where has Tabletop been a big part of your life? And uh, how's it changed the person that you are today? So I guess maybe just to kind of jump into that, Chris, how did you first get into Tabletop games? Oh, my gosh. Uh, so I can remember the very first day I started uh, uh, playing Tabletop games. And this is probably going to date me a little bit. But... Uh, you know, I was I was going to a movie uh, with a, a couple friends of mine. We were going to watch Lake Placid, actually, if anyone remembers that terrible nice. horror movie from 99. Uh, and, we, you know, general mall rat kids, we were wandering around the mall, uh, you know, before the show started. And we uh, walked uh, across a games workshop. And, uh, you know, there in the windows, there's a bunch of models. You know, looked really cool. Went inside, got a demo game. And, you know, the I guess the rest is kind of rock and roll history. We came home from there and uh, you scrounged together whatever, you know, board game miniatures, toys, small, like, castles we could find and just made up our own version of the game as, we, as best we could based on the, you know, the demo game we had played in the store. So, you know, it's built a little bit front since then, fortunately, but, uh, you know, I'm... Still the same kid at heart, just looking forward to playing games with my friends. So, so did you get the demo game and then miss the movie? No, we made the movie. I mean, I think I would have rather had a second demo game, given how <laughs> bad that movie was, from what I remember. But uh, you know, it was. Uh, I've had plenty of games to make up for it since. Just a few. How about you, Mark? What got you into tabletop war gaming? Oh, buddy, it uh, unfortunately. Like Chris there, it's a little bit of a long backstory there. But uh, the game that actually got me into it was a WizKids game with those uh, like hero click kind of style. <clears throat> but it was the uh, old school mech warrior, kind of like the uh, battle tech light, if you will. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, me and my little sister actually 
uh, a buddy of mine, and then it was kind of turned into a family thing. Eventually, I had my mom play it, my sister, myself, and a couple of buddies up at uh, over on the north side when there used to be the store um, Chaos Gaming, which I can't remember what it was before. Gamer's Lair, sorry. And then it evolved to that. Uh, that's what got me into it. And then the guys there, they brought in War Machine and they started playing that. And I was like, well, these look way cooler. And uh, yeah, kind of jumped into that when it first started to take off. Nice. Yeah, for me, mine uh, is a, a funny one where I, I had no interest in doing this tabletop wargaming stuff whatsoever. And so I started, you know, like dating my now wife. And uh, she had this cousin where they're just trying to find what to do with him, what are some likes. And he really liked this 40K game. So she convinced me to buy into it and start playing games with her cousin. And then whereas the cousin, you know, over time lost interest, did other things, it, it of course, really stuck with me and then moved on to fantasy and War Machine and everything else. But it was really me just trying to, you know, give this cousin of my girlfriend something to do. That then it really latched on to me. So it's literally her own fault of what the monster has become. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is all her fault. <laughs> so the next thing I want to talk about is like uh, the immediate challenges and benefits. So when you first got into this, let's say like your first year, maybe second year, what were the things from tabletop war gaming coming into your life that really made it uh, better or that was actually like a real challenge for you to even get into this hobby? So... Chris, what's your take on that? I mean, when I first got into the game, I was, I, like I said, I was pretty young. Um, so a big hurdle for me was obviously cost. You know, it's hard to buy a $60 kit, $50 kit, whatever the price was at that time, with, a, with an allowance, right? Or, you know, scrounging money together from cutting lawns or whatever it was. Um, you know, and I think it's definitely something to consider, especially now we're all grown ass adults with money and like we can, we can budget some money towards it. And regardless of how big our budget is, it's probably bigger than the money I scrounged together from whatever I was doing when I was, you know, 14, 15, 16. So like, it's a big hurdle for people to get into the game right now. And uh, it's just something to keep in mind as people are entering the community, building things up and, and going from there. And I guess the second biggest challenge I had, again, being young, but I could even see it as uh, with a lot of new gamers now, is a lot of rule sets are, are quite complex. And where, where we can, we're trying to streamline things and make things more simple. But there's still a big learning gap that a lot of people have to uh, have to climb to be able to get into really any war game. So, you know, that's a big challenge, but lots of people tackle it in different ways. And the good news now, as opposed to when I was first getting into the game, is there's so many resources available to you, whether it's YouTube videos, podcasts like these ones, you know, there's so many people out there willing to share what they know about the things they love that it's, it's easier. I think now than it was at least when I was first starting. So. Yeah. What will benefits? I think you talked a lot about immediate challenges. What were some of the immediate benefits that you found from doing this? I think obviously the like main benefit from getting into gaming of any kind is, you know, just, it just gave us something to do as kids, you know, like it gave a little bit of structure to when we were hanging out. And I mean, whether or not it was, it was the right thing to be doing, spending all, all of our time in basements, painting models and playing games against each other. It, it was, it was probably more for us than just like going to blockbuster for a video game or, you know, spending a weekend eating pizza and just hanging out right so it was a uh, it was definitely a big benefit to to give us something else to do and the creative aspect of it all too other than just tabletop gaming there's the hobby component right and i've never been very good at drawing or i can't play a musical instrument or anything like that um but with painting i found something that i could at least accomplish um and obviously i wasn't very good when i started but over over time, I was I found it just enjoyable as an app. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mark? What are some of those initial challenges and benefits that you got from it? Uh, well, kind of like Chris is saying that uh, well, starting at such a young age that cost is a big pain in the butt. Um, the miniatures that I was playing with weren't, for the most part, nearly as expensive it, as anything from Games Workshop because they were just cheap plastic stuff. But uh, pretty much the only thing... Uh, that I can really talk about for that. It's 
not really hard to get into the game that I did, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I just think it's funny how, uh, Chris, you're worried about dating yourself by mentioning Lake Placid, and then you drop the blockbuster card there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are a little bit old, too, right? Like, it just shows how long I've been in this freaking tabletop game before. You know, it's something that's really taken over all components of my life, right? Which is, you know, good, good and bad. But, you know, for the most part, it's just something that's been there for a very long time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for me, I'd say that when I first got into it, the the immediate challenges uh, were just the fact that, oh, wow, this is uh, much more than I thought. I really expected that, okay, I'll go to this store. I can see all the shelves. I have, like, the the models already put together. I'll point to them and buy them. But, no, I have to buy the boxes. I have to glue them together. I have to paint these to actually play in the store. So it, it turned out that when I got into this hobby, it was a lot more than I first expected. Just I, It's basically three hobbies in one, the building, the the, the painting, and then the playing after. Uh, luckily at that point, you know, that was one of the things where like, I didn't have a family yet. I had a job and an apartment and, you know, like a girlfriend, but not a lot of expenses. The price part, even though I was playing GW wasn't so bad. Um, but I'd say then on the flip side for the benefits, just all of a sudden finding something that could really get that competitive itch. You know, before that, I played a lot of hockey. I played a lot of soccer. And then, you know, I do like maybe like board games or or video games. And, you know, maybe there was a bit of that. But man, just straight up, it's like you're playing against someone. You made something. I made something. We're battling. And there's going to be a winner. And something in that just drew me in. And... I wouldn't say, you know, like I was like a win at all cost type person, but just the fact that there was that competitive outlet was something that was just huge for me coming into this hobby. So I guess moving on then, you know, like obviously we've all been playing a long time. Uh, maybe we won't be saying how long, although we've given some hints already. But uh, jumping back to you, Chris, I mean, over the, you know, let's let's just be honest, the 10 plus years that we've been doing this, what have been some of the more long term challenges you, you found with just doing tabletop wargaming and the long term benefits? Sure. I mean, I'll start with, with the challenges again. I think. The, the biggest one I've seen, um, and it's kind of an odd one, is given the number of games that we have in the, in the inv- gaming environment or even just the other hobbies or things to do out there in the world, social things, having a family, whatever, you know, over the years you see people who are enjoying different things or moving on from the game or, you know, doing other things with their lives, which is totally fine. Um, and, you know, great for, for individuals, but it's hard sometimes. Like, it's a challenge when you're, you know, you have best friends, you have family members, you have people who you've played games with who all of a sudden don't want to play those games with you anymore or move on to a different game or whatever. And it's or it's hard to, to kind of... Yeah, I know, right? God, who would do something like that? And it can just be difficult from a personal perspective to, to kind of cope with that. And one thing that, you know, I've really had to lean into is like recognizing that just because someone is maybe playing a different game from you doesn't mean that they're they're not your friend. They don't want to hang out with you. It's just people enjoy, enjoy different things. They enjoy doing other things. And it's the different strokes for different folks kind of mentality. So that's kind of the biggest challenge i've had to go through um i guess in in the tabletop world but on the flip side of that like i'd say the biggest long-term benefit of all of this is the fact that i've truly made like lifelong friends i mean the person i walked into the gw with years and years ago is still a person i am friends with today you know um i was at his wedding you know however many years later and you know i know his kids and you know we we still talk we still hang out so and when i moved to Kelowna, for example the biggest benefit there with tabletop gaming is i knew that there was a community to go to i knew there was people who were going to be like-minded and all i had to do was reach out through my local gaming store find out who these people were find out where i could find them and there was instantly a community that i could gel with and being a person who moved around a couple times, like that was such a, a big deal for me was that 
I could just find people and hang out with them and do something that we enjoyed together. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Mark? You assume I'm paying attention this entire time. What was the question again? <laughs> what are you doing over there? You painting? You're building something? Yeah, I'm painting stuff. <laughs> How I was dare listening. you do tabletop stuff while we talk about tabletop stuff? I never said I was a good co-host, did I? <laughs> so what we're talking about is in the long term, over the you know the ten plus years that we've been doing this tabletop war game and thing, uh, what were some of like the long term benefits and the long term cha- challenges that came up across that? It's like I said earlier. Unfortunately, there's not a lot I can say other than what Chris is saying. Um, the friendships that you've built over these years, like you said, literally over ten years, are something I wouldn't give up for anything. Uh, I've known you for pretty much the entire time I've been playing games. My best friend, uh, James, I think a couple of you guys have met him before. Uh, I've known him for almost 15 years. We've been started playing games together and that bond will never go away. Right. Um, other than that, it gives a creative outlet for me. So me uh, as a person that works in the trades, like I don't have a lot of extra time to do a lot of things. So the fact that I have this extra outlet is uh, pretty handy. Mm -hmm. How about the challenges, the long-term challenges? Oh, buddy. There's so many challenges. Uh, Being able to keep up with everything that's evolving in this game, I think is one of the biggest challenges for me. I get stuck with something I really like, and unfortunately I kind of keep on on going. Hmm. Yeah, all fair enough. I mean, uh, I think the big part for me, my stuff's going to mirror Chris a lot where uh, the the benefits and the challenges are kind of reflecting each other, where the benefit was just so many friends pulled, you know, gathered over the years from this, right? I, it almost seems weird to think that other people have friends that like, you know, the majority of their friends be from work or from a sport or something like that, where, you know, if I look at all my acquaintances, the vast, vast majority or somebody that I learned, I met from, you know, War Machine or Attack X stuff, or, you know, just some sort of tabletop wargaming thing. And then though, at the same time, like Chris said, One of the things is the biggest challenge then is that what happens when one of these people move to a new place? What happens when they want to try a new game? And when you have this, you know, different groups of friends, do I follow them to play this game? Do I follow over here to to play this game? And I think the biggest thing that really was a challenge for me uh, as well, and maybe I'm sure this is something that you guys are going to have for yourself, is that after it was the very beginning and like the benefits were what could it do for me? You know, it really hit that competitive itch. The next thing is I started having kind of that spot where I want to grow this community. I wanted to build it. And then it was just one of those things where I would enjoy running events and having people come to them. But at the same time, the challenge of trying to do that and trying, you know, because not everybody likes every tournament. So how am I going to try and make the most people happy? How am I going to try and resolve these issues? And uh, yeah, that's turned out to be a, a real challenge. I know uh, over there in Chris, you're one of the, the main people leading things for, for War Machine and stuff. So how about for you and trying to, to be that, trying to be like a, a community leader over there? Yeah, I definitely echo your statements around like, you know, trying to find a balance for people that everyone kind of likes. I know we've, we've, we've weighed pretty heavily in Calgary into like, we just run steamrollers, right? And we do a couple fun events during our, our weekly gaming night. But in general, all of our events are, you know, standard steamroller, play your games, there's one winner at the end kind of thing, which is good and bad, right? There's there's advantages and disadvantages to everyone. We also have the significant advantage of having you, you know, just up the road out a few hours and being able to say, oh, well, maybe the Edmonton crew is running some of those more, say, like, funzy events, right? The, like, more thematic kind of stuff so that there's still an option available to people. I think if we didn't have that, we would have to lean into that space a little bit heavier for our community specifically. Um, but, you know, just as long as there's options available to people is really what we're we're looking to strive to do. Mm-hmm. 
Another challenge I found as well is just the challenge of the different games competing against each other. Because again, we're all just tabletop war gamers. We're all just, you know, dorks liking to play with toys, basically. But I mean, you really get into this camp thing where like, I'm a 40k person, I'm a war machine person, I am a flames of war person. And man, you, you try and mix these things together. And it's so hard to make that a camaraderie as opposed to, you know, no, our group is the best. We want to prove we're the best. And so that's one of the things where I always love going to cons because when you have multiple systems, you get to see those old friends that went to a new system and you haven't seen for so long. But you can guarantee the, the, that conversation will come up that, you know, what's better, Gill Ball or, or Blood Bowl or all these different things, right? So what do you think about that? Have you found that to be a challenge? That is a very significant challenge. Um, you know, it's like Apple versus PC, right? Everyone gets in their camp and they're so stuck in their camp and you can't get them out of it, right? Without, you know, some some real, real work, which just in the long run isn't isn't really worth it. If people don't see advantages or disadvantages to other systems by themselves, they're, you're never going to be able to drag them out of it. So there's no... In my opinion, there's no real point to even have the, I guess, the argument or whatever you'd call it with with other people. Um, so it is a good opportunity, like you said, at cons, you know, or multi events, uh, you know, weekends, whatever, um, to see other people who are in other games and just find that that common theme of just wanting to to play games, just wanting to be out and maybe have a drink or have a chat or whatever. Um, I know recently, you know, my community in general has been testing out some other games from War Machine, um, but, and there's there's things we like about it, there's things we don't like about it. I mean, some of us are playing 40K specifically, and, you know, it's fun to try different things. Um, I'm For me personally, the more I, I play other games, the more I realize there are things about War Machine that I... I truly and deeply just love, uh, and I, I can't find a replication for that anywhere elsewhere. But, you know, there are people who are, would say the same thing about 40K or Age of Sigma or, you know, Flames of War, whatever game they want to pick, right? And again, that's where I go back to that. It's different strokes for different folks. You know, people enjoy what they enjoy and find the common ground, work with them where you can. It doesn't mean that you have to just because you play different games doesn't mean you have to not be friends, right? Like you can still all enjoy each other's company. Absolutely. Uh, another negative or challenge that nobody brought up, so I want to make sure it's something that we cover, is obviously the cost. I, I man, over the all the years that I've been playing the different games, I I don't think I even want to know how much I've spent on models and paints and going to tournaments and the travel for the tournaments and those hotels and just all man, I, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, there's a significant, significant cost, right? Uh, and I, I mentioned it as like a challenge is like when I was growing up buying a box set is definitely a challenge. But like now, you know, you have all the additional costs, you know, I, I went to WTC for the last couple of years. So, you know, there's several thousand dollars, you know, traveling to Adepticon, traveling to LVO, you know, there's hotel costs, there's flights, there's, or, or, or driving costs, you know, even coming up the road to Edmonton, you know, you're spending 40, 50 bucks, whatever it is on a, a tank of gas to get there and back. And it's, it's, it, there's cost to everything that's not even model wise right and you look at i got a room in my basement full of models that i some of them i play with the vast majority of them i'd say that i don't and there's i would be very scared to tell my wife exactly how much money i spent on this over the years i think she has a an idea but you know isn't quite uh uh in line with how much the exact number would be which would be terrifying yeah, but you, Mark, I bet you've spent what, like probably five bucks on models? It would be about that? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, give or take a couple numbers. <laughs> Is she like standing there behind you, Chris, like listening to you say that? Uh, she's in a different part of the house, so yeah. Oh, she's, uh, yeah, I think I'm okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you always hear the thing like, you know, like, oh, I could have been spending this money on something else. Like, if I would have gone into video gaming, I'd be buying high-end computers and games or could be drinking or whatever. But, I mean, there's still no denying that there's a, there's a cost to playing this game financially. Yeah, and I, like, we do lots of other hobbies. I also, you know, I play hockey or soccer, uh, you know, I golf sometimes. And all of those things have a cost to them, you know, especially a game like hockey, which I just picked up four or five years ago now and it's like buying all the equipment for that and renting ice and you know getting into a league all of those things have significant costs associated with them it's not like our hobby is any different hmm. so the uh, next question i had for us then is that considering all these things along the way all the pluses and minuses do you feel that you are better off in your life because you got into tabletop wargaming. So Chris, what's your take first? 100%. Life is better off for me personally, at least because I'm in wargaming. Like we talked about earlier, like, I don't know, like other people make friends other ways. I actually don't know how you make friends outside of tabletop wargaming. <laughs> it's a little bit ridiculous. You know, like I'd say again, the vast majority of my friends have been through wargaming and you know, my life is better off because of that. And especially we look now in like this whole quarantine situation. Oh my gosh, if I didn't have the gaming group to lean on and have conversations with and, you know, hobby with, I, I would just be talking to myself all the time or to my dog. And I'd be, yeah, definitely climbing the walls a lot more than I already am. So definitely not your wife, though. Eh? No, no. She does her <laughs> own thing. Get in your own room. <laughs> How about you, Mark? Yeah, man, like, there's no way that you could see this entire experience for gaming, whether it be tabletop or video or whatever it is, as negative. Um, again, like Chris has said, there's so many friendships that I've created from just playing War Machine alone, let alone all the other games that I've played over the years, that I, I consider people closer friends than people that I see every day. Um I've literally got people halfway across the world that I talk to every day. And there's people I see every day that I just kind of would rather not talk to. It's a little ridiculous. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I got to echo the same thing that I mean, like all things considered, you know, sometimes you look back and you think of the cost and you think like, oh, man, I could have taken my, my family to Hawaii how many times. But overall, just the number of friends and just the, the good times. I mean, like you, you got to enjoy yourself too, right? And I've had honest enjoyment from this game over and over and over again and I think another thing too is just the fact that there is something you get from this too right where I think like in my work I'm a little bit more akin to systems right from doing tabletop wargaming you learn systems you learn how to look for how the you know what triggers what type thing and that actually does have some effects you know like I kind of feel that the fact that I'm, I'm good at say like Excel and macros and some programming probably comes from doing all the different rule type games that I've got into over the years but yeah absolutely uh, the last question I want to get into with this then is that if you were to do this all again you go back in time we're not going to say how long and you get to talk to you know young Chris young Mark young Brian what would you tell yourself as uh, you know something to do slightly different if you were to do it again so Chris how about you I think I would just tell him to keep going Tell him to keep having fun with the things you know he's doing. Try and find the enjoyment in everything. I mean, the last thing you want to do, particularly, particularly as you're just getting into the game, is to get frustrated with, you know, maybe losing or not seeing all the enjoyment you can get you can in the game. And just to you know work through that and find the things you really like in it. Yeah, fair enough. Is that is that because that was something that was challenging to you early on? Uh, potentially, yeah. I mean, I I was I, I've always been a, a competitively minded person, I guess. Um, so losing for me is is hard, um, and it you know it can get frustrating at times. And so, as you're learning a new game, as you're you know growing up in your your, it's uh it can definitely be uh you know dis discouraging. So you know just uh, something to focus on is the the positive aspects of things. Oh, yeah. I could definitely get behind that. How about you, Mark? What would you say? 
Yeah, literally, there's not a lot I change. Basically, just do what you think is fun and don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Oh, fair enough. I The one that I was going to say for myself that I think uh, Chris is going to like is I would have told myself to get into Orcs and Goblins as fast as possible. Because one of the things I said in the beginning there is that I really want to get into this tabletop wargaming to be very competitive. And I love that competition component. But it got to the point where, you know, you're, you're tracking every win. Every loss was something that I had to scrutinize over to figure out why I lost. And when you got to Orcs and Goblins, where the way that that works is like you roll a dice to see if your guys randomly run forward and randomly fight each other. And all of a sudden that just drives home the fact that, look, this is a dice game. There's things that happen that are out of your control. Just have fun with it. Is that what you <laughs> found as well, Chris? Oh, you're absolutely right, Brian. Like, it's just so much fun in Orcs and Goblins. And, I mean, the same randomness doesn't exist within Trolls, but, the, like, the same... I thought it was kind of the same theme, I guess, when I jumped over to the to War Machine and Hordes. But just the, the dice mechanics of Orcs and Goblins, the animosity, the charging your own guys, the game is actually not in your hands. And there's actually something quite refreshing to that when you have like a strategy and you're you're focused on how you're going to win this game and then all of a sudden things go completely off the rails and you just kind of have to absorb it and roll with the punches and actually enjoy the experience a little bit which seems a little bit odd but is enlightening yeah yeah, absolutely. How about just like uh, the number of cons you go to? Because I mean, obviously, you, you've gone to a fair number of big ones now. But I mean, just over the years, would you want to be going to have gone to, to more? I mean, obviously, that's where the big cost comes in. I mean, would you have liked to have been going to these big ones across seas right from the very beginning, if you could, or as soon as possible? Yeah, I think, I mean, as soon as I was basically able to financially afford it, I was going to cons. I was going and, you know, back in the Games Workshop days, I was doing the Hall of Heroes circuit. I once flew to, um, God, Kitchener, Ontario, I think by myself when I was 19 years old, just to get, it was the last like Hall of Heroes tournament of the year and it was there quebec city and i'm like i don't speak french so i guess this is where i'm going to get points you know <laughs> so as i i've been to a lot of cons i would say particularly if i was doing it again to be less concerned about starting to do that and really starting to ramp that up early i think there's a lot of um you know uh for me at least i had a lot of like concerns with traveling a lot of concerns with like going going out and meeting new people, maybe being a little bit shy about it. And, oh my God, what if people, you know, don't like me or, you know, what if there's nothing to talk about? And that's, that's never going to be the case, right? You all at least have the very one thing of tabletop or gaming that you're going to enjoy with the people you meet, that you're going to be able to talk to with the people you meet. And the con experience is so much better because of that. Yeah, absolutely. And Mark, I know you, my feeling is that you've been going to cons almost from the very beginning, but what would you say about that? Could you have wanted to do this even earlier or more so? Oh, yeah. Ever since I heard from uh, the different cons they had, I wanted to go. Um, I wish I would have done it earlier for sure. I know that uh, they are a little bit expensive, like Chris is saying. He obviously has done a lot more than I have, uh, but... Uh, Eventually, I made it a, kind of a benchmark to do X amount per year, so I was pretty excited about that. So if I could have done that earlier in my life, I think it would have been awesome. Yeah, same thing. I mean, the, the biggest thing is that I think – I squandered those first years where I didn't have a, like a full family yet that I could have actually gone out. And, you know, it's easier to justify when you don't have three kids to, to go out overseas or, you know, whatever it is. So I wish I would have done more of that then when I was a little bit more free. But, uh, you know, there's still time. There's still time. Yeah, there's, there's always time, right? Make it happen. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I mean, that's really what I wanted to talk about. I think we're all in agreement that, I mean, tabletop wargaming is just a fantastic thing in your life in general. And uh, hopefully, I mean, whereas a lot of people probably right now at home are, you know, more getting into, I want to watch Netflix and play video games. I hope they realize just 
how good board games or say t- tabletop war gaming is for them. Definitely do both. You know, if you're watching some Netflix, you're watching, you know, some uh, Tiger King, throw some paint on some models while you're doing it. Get get a little bit of both cross pollination in. Yeah, you're not wrong. All right. Well, perfect. Well, we're at our about half hour that we aim for. So, Chris, I'm glad that we finally got you on here. I'm sure we're going to get you on here again. Thank you so much for having me. All right. And everybody listen at home. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you later. Bye. See you guys.